I just realized I forgot to film an intro for this video. Welcome, my name is Wahoo of Wahoo's Kona. Welcome. Welcome. Hello, hello. Today you're going to join me in reading The Idiot. I'm Wahoo of the future. I'm May 11th Wahoo, so I've already read the book. But you're going to watch me read it. You're going to see me go through it. Okay? And then you and I will meet again at the end of the video. Goodbye, I hope you enjoy! Seem very cozy indeed. Um, hey gang, I just finished reading the first few chapters of The Idiot, and I have quite a bit of thoughts on this. Um, so far I like Prince Michigan. He seems someone worthy of writing a story about, if you know what I mean. Like, um, he's very likable and he's he's just interesting. And I think I think something that I've noticed is that people usually outright just dismiss him when they see him because he he looks poor and he looks simple. He looks stupid. And on three different occasions he's managed to change someone's mind about him, as a matter of fact. Um, when when he first meets people, they're like they're like ew, gross. He's poor. Look, all the all the stuff he has, he like carries it in a pillowcase. Ew. And like by the end of their conversation, they're like, do you need money? Like do you, do you need a place to stay? I can get you a job if you really want. And I'm just I just feel like Dostoevsky. It's just he's just like hey maybe <laughs> hey maybe poor people are deserving of human decency and kind. Just a thought, and um, the, our main characters, um, Natas, Natasia and Mishkin, have yet to meet, but so far I've marked in, in, the, in the pink where Miss uh, Filipovna is a little baddie and she needs to accept my marriage proposal expeditiously, like immediately <laughs> I need her to be my wife, but so far, um, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Uh, all right, you guy. Um, I just finished reading. Oh, the date is May fourth. May the fourth be with you. Um, I just finished reading some of The Idiot, and um, I'm finding that it takes me much, much longer to read 50 pages. Usually reading 50 pages takes me about an hour. In this book, it takes me two hours to read 50 pages, so, you know, that's to be expected. Um, it was, it was, it did get a little slow there at the beginning, which is, um... I guess it's bound to happen. It's not gonna be action action the whole time. But, um, someone just tried to. No, no spoilers. No spoilers. No spoilers. But, um, let me read you this poem that's in here that I. that this character was reciting. Okay, where is it? Okay. Once a poor knight lived in the world, silent and simple his state. Though his mien was pale and gloomy, his spirit was bold and straight. A single vision he possessed, from reason kept far apart, and deep with its impression engraved upon his heart. Thenceforth his soul consumed to ash, no look on womankind he cast, spoke not to them until the day that to the grave he passed. Round his neck a rosary he wore, in place of a scarf genteel, and from his face he never raised to anyone's his visitor's steel, his visor's steel. Filled with a love forever pure, faithful to his dream, sweet note, F and B, at last in his own blood upon his shield he wrote. And in the wilds of Palestine, as o'er the rocks they came, the paladins rushed into battle, declaimed each lady's name, Lumen coeli sancta rosa, cried he with zealous frown, and like thunder did his menace strike the Moslems down. Returning to his distant castle, he lived strictly confined, always silent, always sad, and as a madman he died. Our character recited this poem to Mishkin, and um, I don't know what's going on between these two. 
I thought there was a little something something, but she seems cruel because they're like making fun of um, Prince Mishkin for being so in love with Natasha. And so I'm just like, I'm just like, was it, was it hate? Is it like love to hate? Like what's going on here? Like what? But I don't know. Uh, so I'm going to take a break from reading. Well, I've done my reading for the morning. I'm going to do a search word because I'm a little grandma. I've done quite a few. Well, in the front. I've done quite a few and watched some YouTube in the background. And yeah. Cherry vanilla is the best flavor of cloak. Of cloak. <laughs> It's much later in the day, yet we are in the same place. I think there's, like, paint on my eye? I was doing this painting. Okay, there we go. Um. Yeah. Another crossword. Just to wrap up the night, um, I think I'm gonna have some thoughts. I'm gonna talk to y'all about the book so far tomorrow morning. Um, but right now, I just wanna digest it. Do this crossword, take a shower, or go to bed, okay? Maybe even have a little snack before bed. But, um, yeah. May 5th, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. Also, this blanket is quite literally the best blanket ever. I got it for Christmas some years ago. It's like it's like the family tradition we do, like, where we get blankets every Christmas. So it's like, yars, yars, ah, oh, best blankie ever. Hey y'all, voice over Wahoo here. Fresh out the shower, gotta use your purifying toner. Um, mm -hmm. This one works pretty good. This one's lasted me way longer than the moisturizer has, actually. Mm. It's the first time I ever did a voiceover. I'm kind of nervous, I don't know. Yeah, make sure you use them cotton swabs. And I don't know why I'm so aggressive. I look like it's literally not that deep, girl. Legs. Oh my god. Yeah, get up with me. If you don't use toner, um, your face dirty. Sorry, that's the truth. But damn, like you don't have to do it this hard. Enough. Put put the cotton swab down. All right, yeah. This is this new moisturizing cream gel, gel cream, whatever BS. It don't work. Um, it just make my skin feel dry. Yeah, but it, it, it's basically just water, y'all. It's just water, water. It's just water. But I, I was used a lot. If you can hear my breath, it's cause I'm broke. You know, and this is just how it. This is just how it is. Okay, y'all, you gonna have to hear me breathe because I'll be breathing. But yeah, yeah, get down in there, get down in there. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Some people I see, they don't, they don't be moisturizing their neck like it's not skin on them. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
forgot I did that. Yeah, this is the <laughs> other moisturizer. <laughs> it has some SPF on it. Oh, bye, chat. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. It has some moisturizer on it, in it, which is why it's like so white. But like my my besties with a little melanin in you, or with a lot of melanin, especially if you have a lot of melanin, you gotta get that sunscreen, vitamin D, SPF. Vitamin D. Stop saying vitamin D. SPF. So, like, you know, you black, not invincible. You brown, not invincible. Okay. Mm -mm. I wish y'all could know how good my skin feels after this kind of treatment. Sorry if you heard the knocking. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, the, this was nice hanging out with you, though. Mm, don't look at that white spot on my forehead. I didn't know I had that. Ooh. Ah, bye. Bye. Ooh, ooh. Hey, queen. The time ah, is 10.07 May 9th, and I just got done doing some. I started reading. Oh my god. I'm not on like page 610. There's like 100 pages left. I think I'll be done by tomorrow. Sorry, my eyes are crying. Oh my god. Like, I'm an old lady now. I go to bed at 10 30. So, like, the fact I started at 8, but I didn't like read all the way straight. I like went 8, <laughs> messed around, and then got back so, like around 2 hours or something. But, um, yeah. This, this story is playing with my heartstrings a little bit because now I don't know. I'm scared. I think the prince has proposed to Aglaya. No, I think this is the first time. But, okay, I don't want to give any spoilers, though. But, like, I don't... Every time he proposes... Well, obviously, if, like, he's proposing a second time, then obviously she didn't say yes the first time. But I think she, he only proposed once. But I keep, I keep, like, getting my hopes up. I'm like, I'm like, oh. Mm. This is so cute. This is so cute. And then she'd be like, ha ha, got ya. You trying to play with my feelings? Don't do that. Don't do that. Anyways. Anyways. And then I'm going to go do the dishes. Make myself a little snack. Like a parfait or something. And then call it a night. Because I am tired. Hi, um, I'm here to interrupt your daily scheduled uh, program to talk about this passage I read a few nights ago because I didn't read this morning or last night, let's be honest, I've been lacking a little. But sometimes, you know, you don't want to read. Don't force yourself. And so, I'm going to talk about this letter. <sighs> okay, a little, it's, it's less of a letter, more of an explanation. So, uh, to preface this, Who's the, the guy who's talking about this is this like young guy, he's like 23 or something, he's like dying of consumption and he's known about it for about um girl, like a month. <laughs> like he's known like a month ago. This the, the, the doctor was like, You're gonna die in a month. And he was like, um hold on. I'm looking to see if we've cured consumption. Cure? Question mark. The consumption cure is the letter. No, no, not a consumption. <laughs> um, how we conquered? Oh, oh, tuberculosis. Oh, yeah, penicillin, baby. But um, he's he's reading this explanation he's written out to this dinner table, and everyone is like tired. It's like late, and they're like drunk, and it's just this guy pouring out his heart about how he's um, bitter that people who are less deserving than him get to die because of their decisions while he has to die basically like on accident like against his will like there's he he was talking about this guy who starved to death and he was angry because you know like starving to death that's something you have some control over do you know what i mean like you could have stolen you could have eaten somebody you know like it doesn't even matter how 
you, you would have lived, but you would have had a choice. He had a choice, and yet he starved to death. And he thinks, like, that's weakness, and he he's angry because, because for him, he doesn't get a choice in the matter. There's nothing he can do but die. And it's like, and it's like, how is that fair? How is that fair that I don't get a choice, but these weak people, these weak, poor, uneducated people have the choice to starve to death? And it was just like, I was just like, first, for first second, I was just like, um, um, I don't think starving to death is a choice. But then I, you know, I, I remember what Murakami said in Killing Commendatory. He said something along the lines of, um, what you need to do is open your eyes wide and look at it. You can judge it later on. And I was like, I was like, mayhaps, you know, he's justified in this feeling. Obviously, you know, like, it's very complicated, you know, I, I think we're so used to just having an initial reaction and going with it and, and not really questioning why we went with that reaction or why we believe that these things. And I'm just like, I'm just like, maybe I think it's wrong for him to think that people who starve to death have a choice, but for him... It's different because he wasn't raised like I was. He was raised in a different time, brought up by different people in a different culture. And so it's like, it's like, are any of us ever really wrong? Or are we just going against what the people before us believed? And they might not necessarily be right. It's just that what we're familiar with, it's just what we were taught. So like familiarity does not equal correctness oh, is that what he says? this is a whole tangent but um I wrote down I wrote down like a whole a whole thing because I didn't want to forget what I was saying okay I said the reason I liked Ippolit's explanation so much I said this is a man who has two weeks left to live and that's being generous because <laughs> this, is, this is medicine and somebody snapped me 1868 oh my god no okay so yeah about 200 years ago. Ooh, ooh, shawty. Ooh, A little less than 200 years ago, so. The modern medicine, <laughs> it's non-existent, my love. But, um, and he's bitter and embarrassed that he's dying. And he's surrounded by all these people who are so full of life, who are worried about things like, oh, I have to meet this, like, girl that I'm attracted to, and I, I don't know if she likes me because she always laughs at me. This is the prince, by the way. And he... He just... It's like he's getting left behind. And he's not even in the ground yet. And he's constantly inviting people to his funeral. And it's like... Kind of mocking his own death. And I'm just like... I'm just like... Yo, 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 yo. Hold on, hold on. This is a little too modern. <laughs> like, I feel like if you're Gen Z, you can... You can imagine, like, one of your friends being like, <laughs> come to my funeral next week. You know what I mean? And it's like, and it's like you have to take a second before you're like, this might be kind of messed up. Like, you have to say it to somebody else, like your mom or something, and then they're like, huh? You know? But for us, it's like normalized. We, we, we make so much fun of ourselves, and it's like, it's like a coping mechanism, I guess, to like dealing with literally everything it's just like mm -hmm, I kill myself like it's not healthy but it's normalized you know what I mean and so I feel like a bullet would fit right in with today's generation um I said he's watching people who are undeserving of life wasted by being poor and starving to death while he who is educated and rich dies of, of like a pathetic disease you know something you can't touch something you can't fight physically. I don't even know where I'm going with this, but I'm just, I just have a lot of thoughts on this explanation and even, even the fact that he feels like he has to explain himself. He has to explain like his death basically to these people who are, who are not his friends. And I think Dostoevsky has such a way with characters. I don't know, I just really like the way he writes characters. I feel like it's so rich. And I can picture these people, I can put a face to these people, I'm like, I'm like, oh, that's something Tom would do. Like, this is something Emma would say. Like, oh, this makes me think about Ashley. And it's like, 
Wow, good writing. That's crazy. I didn't know that was a thing people could do. Um, uh, I said this is like not a single thing. What was I trying to say? Last night, I was like 3 a.m. and I was just like, I'm having thoughts on this topic. So bear with me here. I don't know what I was trying to say. I said this is not a single thing, i.e. anger, sadness. It is like an encompassing feeling. Having this idea that you were being cheated while those who... And then I left it there. Way to leave us on a cliffhanger, Wahoo! Queen! Those who deserve it, who are undeserving, get to have this gift. And it's like, you feel cheated. Like, how, how is that fair? This pathetic, poor, uneducated man gets to starve to death, and I have to just wither away without any choice, without, you know, any chance to fight for, you know, life? How's that fair? And it's like, it's like my, my boy, I didn't even finish the letter yet. I'm like, I'm scared because this is like, I think this might be my favorite part. The book was getting a little slow there, but the romance between Aglaya and the prince was keeping me a little, <laughs> you know, a little boost of serotonin here and there until I saw this letter and I was just like, whoa, I'm afraid to finish the letter. Let me read to you a sentence from it, actually. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew one poor fellow of whom it was later told to me that he died of hunger, and I remember this drove me into a fury. If it had been possible to bring that poor fellow back to life, I think I would have killed him. Sometimes I felt better for whole weeks on end, and I was able to go out into the street, but in the end, the street began to make me so angry that I deliberately spent whole days locked in my room, although I could have gone out like everyone else. I read that I was like, you're mad at a man for starving to death. I was just like, this is just something to think about. Oh, I guess while I'm here, let me talk about these other things I wanted to bring up. But, my god, that letter. I think I'll read it to you at some point. I could just like make a whole video reading it. If y'all want, if that's something y'all are into, but I might just do it. Because I want to, but I was reading it out loud, and like I started getting tongue twisted. I'm like, English is hard. English is really hard. If you guys read something out loud for a long time, it, like you're start, you start to get tongue twisted. But um, oh, okay. Anyways, um, I want to talk about Mishkin and his idiocy. And, and again, I've already mentioned before that epilepsy is not a learning disorder. So I was, I was just like, why do people keep like calling him an idiot? Why do they think him an, like an idiot? He he talks on the same level they do. He has great penmanship and, and and stuff like that. And I'm just like, I'm just like, they think he's an idiot. I wrote it down. Girl, thank you so much for helping me out. I said the only time. Oh, they think the prince a fool because he doesn't hide his feelings, nor does he feel any reason to. The characters in this book are usually um, more inclined to reach for mockery and sarcasm than, rather than, you know, sincerity and truth and honesty about how they feel about what they think. So to see someone who's unafraid or someone who doesn't even consider hiding their feelings or, or you know, turning to these defense mechanisms to, to, to get through modern life, you know, modern life is like crazy to them. So they call him an idiot because they don't understand that he, he doesn't need to hide how he feels. He doesn't need to constantly impress or try to make people think he's cool. Like, why oh, my heart beating so fast? I drank two cups of coffee today, so. So, like, they, they basically don't understand sincerity. There are moments where people are sincere and then they instantly backtrack and they try to like joke it, like joke about it or like make fun of him to like hide the fact that they were just honest and true for like a split second because that's terrifying. You know, I, I think we can all agree that it's like, it's like hard to be honest and sincere to like say what you're feeling. Like sometimes I even, like after I've like opened up to somebody about something, I'm always like, oh my god, that's so embarrassing, like, that's so embarrassing, now they know that I feel like this, and like, why is that, why are we so conditioned to be embarrassed about how we feel or like how we think, like, why are we so embarrassed about sincerity, sorry, my chair is on the rolling wheels, I think it's a little messed up, but like, why are we so scared of being true and honest, and this is like a whole soapbox moment, um, 
but I think I think there's nothing more honorable than being this is so cliche but it's true we could we created cliches for a reason okay but I think it's nothing more noble and, tr and honest about there's nothing more noble and true than just saying how you feel and not trying to hide behind any pretense or you know jokes or anything like to just sit in your feelings in your true feelings without feeling this need to constantly apologize for it or or pretend like you were joking or just try to cover it up and it's like I'm like I'm really start he's really starting to grow on me, man. And I'm like, there's two other babies left. I don't want to say goodbye to Michigan. But um Damn bruh. I really like this dude. Um Yeah. That's all for now. <laughs> Y'all, I am dead, dead hungry. Um, it's May 10th and I can smell the food from my room. My sister's been cooking for like, uh, 300 years. I'm so hungry. I'm gonna go ask. It's taking so long. Cheers. Oh, you know. Wait, what's the ETA? will have to obey my hunger for the time being. Mm. Mm -hmm. We got the cheese bread. I like cheese bread, some chicken, some tomato sauce for dipping. Mm. Thank you, Goody. Um, okay, same day, post meal. I'm full. And again, I've been reading Cersei in the background. Um, usually like a chapter a day or something. So like this is, it's gonna be slow going. But it's so good. I'm only I'm only at chapter three now. I just finished chapter two. But uh, bruh, I miss this. I miss this. It reads so differently from the idiot. Like I didn't realize like how Dostoevsky really like has his own writing style. Like it it just reads completely different. Like completely different. I know I'm gonna love this book. I can I can just feel it in my soul. It's gonna be like up there in like my top three. For show. Sure. For show. Sure. But yeah, a little update on this background read. But um I have forty pages left of the idiot. I think I'm gonna finish it tonight. If I'm good and you know, stick to my schedule, which I love to do. Usually read fifty pages in the morning, fifty pages before bed. To like wind myself down. Um, but yeah. Okay, so I interrupted my music to tell you guys that I'm gonna go to my cousins, my sister. I'm not sure how we're related, but we are. So my Goody and I are gonna go. Goody's my sister. If you didn't know, I have a sister. We're gonna go over there, play some board games. You might get some footage, you might not. We might get tipsy, get lit, we might not. But, uh, a little update. I, st I actually stopped my music just to give y'all an update. Queen. And then we might, this might be done in two days. I don't even know if I gave you enough, like, footage to, like, constitute a vlog. But, it is what it is. It is what it is. I had two cups of coffee, so. And I haven't been out in a minute, so let's go.
the end of the vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. I finished reading the book yesterday, May 11th, I believe. So I think it took me about <coughs> a little over a week to finish this book. And my god, can I certainly feel it. Um, woo, I think this book put me in a little bit of a reading slump. Because right now, I don't want to look at any more words. I don't want to see words anymore. Because, like, y'all... I put in the work, you guys. Oh my god, it got a little so it got so slow at certain parts, like it would lose its momentum, and I'd just be like, "Girl, just read it, just read it, girl. I'm sure it's gonna be interesting." And it was interesting. I'm not gonna lie, it was interesting. But damn, this ain't for everybody. I'm tired just thinking about this book. Like yesterday, I had. 40 pages to read was it even 40 uh, yeah it was 40 pages and I would read two pages and get up and go do something else because I was just so like I was like I can't I can't but I did it I got through it and I, I my my suspicions were right I had a certain suspect in mind for the murder and I was right but I didn't know who was going to die, and I'm surprised about who died, so. But we, we find out it's literally, like, the last ten pages that that happens. And I'm like, why would you put in the blurb if it doesn't happen until, like, two seconds before the end? I felt like that was a little too teasing. But, um, overall, I think it's a three out of five. For me, it's a three out of five. Um... Yeah, I think you should check it out. I think it's, um, yeah. <laughs> I think it's, it's worth reading. It's worth reading, really, it is. And I'm just so astonished about the prince's, um, character arc. And I'm just like, yeah. Anyways, let me not ramble on too long. I know this video's long. But uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, I have been Wahoo of Wahoo's Corner. If you like this video, like. Like the video. If you want to subscribe, you want to stick around, join my other students here. I have a few of them <laughs> collected here. Uh, go ahead and do so if you want to comment. Maybe um, if you've read The Idiot, actually. I want to hear what your thoughts are. And was it. No, but like, if you're going to say anything spoilery for other people, make sure you tag your spoilers. But, um,. No, that's it. Thank you. I'll see y'all next week or on Saturday for Poetry Saturdays. Bye now. Get out. You're the nicest Cut. person that I've ever met. Even though we live so far apart. Oh.